Hi everyone. Oh, I'm really excited to be here. I missed out on last year gathering. <laughs> so this time around, when I was up, I was about missing out. I was really panicking. I was like, wow, I'm going to miss out again. So I'm, I'm happy to be here. Um, the only thing here is um, I wish there were a lot of Africans here. That's my brother Thomas. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> 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 right, right. I wish I was a lot of Africans over here. But I don't I don't blame myself. Until last year I didn't know anything about um open science hardware. Uh, it was new to me. Um, but getting to know about it, I realized about the potential that this could do for our continent. And so I'm just talking briefly about um, what can potentially do for us and maybe highlight a couple of things that is happening. Um, Going around to see the exhibition uh, kind of made me, uh, it challenged me a little bit sad a bit because then I realized the amount of wonderful works that is happening across the other parts of the world. And then I look back, um, yeah, there are good works happening in Africa, but it's not up to this scale, and I wish we could do more. Um, like we are being left behind, so let's, let's see what open science and hardware can do for us. Uh, okay, so. Yeah, so, um, so the whole thing is I'm trying to find out whether uh, open science hardware can offer some alternative way um, which can really prepare our development as a continent. We are at a stage where we really need that. Uh, my continent currently has the largest uh, uh, population in terms of youth population. Um, it's, it's projected to grow. Um, we have serious challenges. Uh, from environment, sanitation to education, energy. Um, on a plan end of the year, it's like a key, key issue. Uh, so there's this opportunity where there's no jobs, so the youth can be challenged to solve problems. But what tool do they use? What platform can they use? What skills do they need to acquire to do this? Uh, so that's something. All right, so... Uh, <clears throat> Well, there is no doubt that uh, our contribution to, and we said a lot of our, our degree and stuff like that, I mean, Africans here, our contribution to science is, is extremely low. Uh, it's as projected by the World Economic Forum on Africa. We, our, our contribution to the global knowledge of science is about 1.1%, uh, which is terrible. <laughs> but it's not like people are not making efforts. But it, it will take more than just few people doing something. We need a whole lot of a critical mass of scientists to, to be working to solve our problems. I mean, we need an algorithm to be understanding better than anyone. All right, so this is a key thing here. Yeah. All right, so um, <clears throat> my presentation is trying to answer why Africans to help to adapt to con and also contribute more in terms of sharing appropriate innovations and scientific breakthroughs through um, open science for rapid scale up and adaptation of solutions for inclusive development. I was making a case here where um, <coughs> you go to Africa in terms of maybe a f communities, we farm in communities. So this community has an innovative solution to address maybe how to store yeah, all right, or maize. You go to the next community about 10 kilometers, you are struggling with how to uh, store these. All right, so why can't we scale up such uh, innovations? Uh, and these are things that open science hardware uh, can help us address and help scale up some of these appropriate innovations at a quicker pace that currently we are starting. All right, so before that, I'll talk a bit about myself. So I'm George. Uh, a lot of people, I know we are, we are in a Spanish speaking country, so everyone call me Jorge, Jorge. Right? It's, it's yeah, but I tell you, it's part of the case, it's not Spanish. All right, so um, George, um, I am part of the co founders for Kumasi High. Kumasi High is an innovation hub in Kumasi. Kumasi is the second capital of uh, the city in, in Ghana. It's the cultural capital of Ghana, actually. Um, the, uh, the capital city for the Ashanti Kingdom, the largest in the sub region, and all that. Yeah. So, what we do is we give the platform for young innovators. We deal with the um, kids to university, we give them the platform for them to um, build up their skills and also help them take ideas to products to markets. Um, we realized over our past. Um, 
five years of working as a student community in five public universities, the importance of having a business model to carry out a solution to the people. Because then we innovated between that period a lot. We had a lot of innovations on our stuff, but none of them was really helping the people. So about two years ago, we thought about it, that uh, we are doing what the universities are doing. So we need to change that. So that's why we adapted uh, the incubation uh, to go with it. So currently, this is like the only hardware incubator uh, in the sub region. We even have startups that we are incubating from Nigeria, um, we have all the resources we could have stretched um, to other countries to do uh, so. And these are some few startups that we are working with, and surprisingly, they are all using some form of open science hardware. Right, so I'm telling someone that they, the skills gap in Africa is huge. You find it little people, I know in hardware is generally you know, across the world, but in Africa it's minute. <laughs> A few people can do impressive hardware stuff. And more, all, almost all of us leverage on open source platform. So you see a very great innovation from Africa and they're building some green or some stuff like that. And so almost all our startups are doing something like that. Um, we have um, the science sets, which is a, a science in a lab. Um, they are using 3D printers to print most part of it for their small scale manufacturing. And they are aiming to just make science practical in our school. Um, we have uh, Pascal Pudding Robotics. So basically using affordable material to help teach robotics. So the case in Africa lab but it's like you can't afford little storm <laughs> my storm. It's too expensive. They can't buy it. So how do you get into the robotics? So this is what the startup is doing, using wood. Um, to build this fast, so they are kind of modular, um, and then you can use to build robotics. It's, it's, it's a great thing, and that's happening. Uh, so, we have one startup helping to build, the, they build this drone out of waste. Uh, so, you just a styrofoam bottles and all that. That's what they use and build it. Um, and then there's one that is basically using an open source platform to build a um, condom vending machine. So, teenage pregnancy is one of the biggest issues that we face in our country and across West Africa. And it's, uh, so it's a religion thing, right? Just that's part of science and religion. Uh, don't talk about protection, screws, and stuff like that. Yeah. So what well, they are going to use this, which have to upgrade the stigma of um, they need to go into a pharmaceutical shop to buy, let's say, a contraceptive, which they can't because they know them, they never would be like, you were a bad boy. That's what it is. It's just in the bathroom. So yeah, I'm going to the bathroom and then you're going to get stuff. No one knows. So that kind of thing. It's, it has been very helpful. They started at a place in the city and was finishing up in a in, in a rigi, you have about 200 hundred parts all going, and the open was so high that they were begging us that we to increase the number. Actually, <laughs> yeah. Um, so there's one particular one, so this one um, is dealing with um, recycling of waste, and it's, the approach is very beautiful because um, the idea was we don't have a recycling plant for e waste in Ghana, but it's actually a dumping site for e waste in the world. Um, Agobushi, uh, which is known over the world, is the one of the most toxic location because of e waste. All right. um, but these guys recycling the e waste make a lot of money. Right, in a day, more than it is some people that work full time. Right, so it can't stop. They do it for a living. Right, so the government have tried a lot of ways to get them out, to suck them and out, but it's not working. So they are okay, can we find a better way that they can recycle like, instead of bending the wires to get a copper which they sell? So they you work with them um, to develop the solution. Uh, it's can make it such a way that they can build it. So it's a very low tech, tech thing. No electronics, nothing. But something that is very effective that they can use in recycling the copper. And it's amazing with what they are doing. Um, then we have um, three printers. So they set up is supporting three printers for education, um, which is great. And then we have the use of the use service and education offline platform. So internet access is quite a big deal in Africa. <laughs> so what they are doing is they, they build a system that could um, really connect to the internet to get an educational resource platform. So the kids basically get access to these resources that's on the internet in the rural areas, but their experience is just like on the internet. And if they request for something which their platform doesn't have, they check it out and the next time connect it to the internet, they get it. So it's, it's really good for them um, because it can bring a gap of resources between the, the big cities and also the rare area.
Right. And aside is we have we started from student community, so which is still we work with, and this connect acts to the grassroots, which is very important for us. Um, at this stage, we we have close to about five um, based in five university public universities in Ghana. Uh, we have an university close to about six hundred, and we just provide skills training uh, because I said it's one of the biggest programs to have right here. So we provide this skills training and then we give them the platform for them to innovate. Those with good ideas, we take ideas to incubate what commerce have even then help them adapt the business model and just start to the product to the market. Alright, so I just want to give a case of what um, open source tech, uh, hybrid tech is, is doing for Africa. Um, so recent time we want that launch um, this is drone delivery um, system, which is delivering blood to rural areas in Rwanda. Uh, this is amazing because logic supply and logistics is one of our biggest challenge in Africa. Most of our roads are not good. <laughs> Most of our roads are not good. Even in the cities, they are terrible. Uh, so talking about the rural areas, it's not in existence. <laughs> so um, this really addresses a lot of problems for us. It addresses a lot. A lot of medical practitioners have to go to trouble to send vaccine from one country to another. So drones is really doing a lot of good work, and we wish it to continue. So the question: if Drones were not made available. Um, how we have just starting to solve a crucial supply and logistics issue like that in Africa. Right, so we have the Mechanics project, which my co-founder, Anna, um, Liz, is on that we have, on the Hive. Um, so it's uh, just about leveraging local resources and um, collaborative um, partnership between uh, innovation house entrepreneurs across um, the world, um, where um, it is open source uh, um, tech and providing solutions where you can take this solution and then replicate the same thing across that place. So something like uh, medical uh, equipment, um, usually distributing manufacturing, you can get some of this in that. Right. I guess um, more we talk about it in the next meeting, hopefully, it should be around by then. Okay, so then the other piece of Arduino. Yeah, sure. The fact is, how do you know? How do you know? Is like, like I said, all our innovations in Africa. It's not like hardcore engineering as you guys are doing. All are based on just like this, and to us, it's it, it giving us that low cost entry point to hard engineering. So I can't talk about everything now, but I'm I've just listed some of the potentials that this uh, open source hardware can do for us, and it's quite. Crucial for me, but I can go through all. I'll share my platform later. But some of the key points is just as more money change the financial uh, uh, situation in Africa, where it's banned or unbanked, uh, now being one of the top technology in Africa. The same way open science have I see that can change how we solve problems in Africa. Because if these things are available, if we train these guys with the skills, they can innovate and we can really scale up innovations at a, a, a better rate than something is happening right now. Um, and for me to uh, I think it's, it's potentially can help us develop a model which can be a social entrepreneurship model kind of for, for Africa in terms of hardware because when we are living impacts by the same time there's a business side that they can also uh, uh, make it sustainable. Right. So this is critical to that. Um, and why 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 is our hope? What's the hope here even despite all these challenges that we are facing in terms of low skills and stuff like that? Well we are seeing a number of the growth of maker space innovation hub across the continent and for us we see that as an entry point for something like if you want to start an evangelism um, in terms of open science hardware, uh, to get more Africans here next time around, we can start through this house, right? Because this is where the youth come together, this is where they, they come together, this is where they, they find hope of uh, finding jobs because they can innovate and be entrepreneurs. And then we can get a message through them that it can go this way, at least we could get a better way to go. Um, and it's come to a point that a lot of innovation coming from Africa mostly are software by the youth. Um, but we are coming to a point that our energy issue, our water issue, cannot be just be created by software, we need hardware. And which is good for us because we have been asking for that, we have been talking about that for some time now. So this is a great time for us to start talking about open science hardware to them. Right? But they don't want to start adapting at this stage. 
Um, and lastly, um, increasing the skills of engineering training programs. So, so a number of organizations that are doing skills training, um, from the work and um, workshop, ourselves, uh, GFBox, we are all doing engineering training. Also. So these programs, we can we can get open science out of here and focus it to them. The encoding is what they teach and it's the young ones. So catch them early um, as they teach them about this and then we can then develop more people in this area of open science out of here. Okay, so yeah, to to write that um, this development becomes very helpful because um, I believe that it's set the right indicators for involving uh, officers, hardware, advocacy, and evangelism across the continent. So we can be young in this new universe, and then we can get this message um, of officers, hardware, and everything. All right, thank you.